All right, at the end of that last section, I was saying that maybe the most important part of the citric acid cycle is the uh, high amount or the high number of electron carriers that are generated. Uh, three NADHs and one FADH2 from each citric acid or acetyl-CoA that enters into the citric acid cycle. And if you remember, two of these are produced for every starting glucose. So in actuality, it's six NADHs and two FADH2s that are produced for every glucose molecule that ultimately will generate two acetic acid or two acetyl-CoAs that enter into the citric acid cycle. <clears throat> so the bulk of the electrons and hydrogens or protons are generated via the citric acid cycle. All right. So uh, the acetic acid, four carbon acceptor molecule, which is the one that is within the citric acid cycle, forms what's called the six carbon citric acid, and that's what cycles through. Okay. You start out with six carbons or six carbons that start in the citric acid cycle. And notice two carbon dioxides are kicked out. So then the four starting acceptor molecule cycles back and is ready to latch on to yet another acetic acid. And the cycle continues and continues. Okay, as long as glucose is being broken down in that first step <clears throat> or first stage, which is glycolysis. So there's your carbon dioxide that are kicked out. Ultimately, you exhale that, breathe it out into the environment. Net of two ATPs are generated. There's only one here, but remember, there's two acetic acids that enter for every starting glucose. And then, as I mentioned, six NADHs and two FADHs are generated for every starting glucose. All right, so what happens to all those electron carriers, the electrons? and the hydrogens they're carrying <clears throat> that are produced in glycolysis, Krebs cycle, right? They work their way towards what's called the electron transport chain, which is in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So these electrons that are gathered from glucose energetically fall down what's referred to as a stepwise cascade through a series of electrons, I'm sorry, through a series of electron transfer proteins in the mitochondrion membrane. <clears throat> that was that video that showed you those kind of, I think they were bluish or purple, purplish um, proteins in the membrane of the mitochondria, and the electrons would migrate through. So the energy that's provided by those electrons ultimately is used to for, uh, produce ATP. And then we'll walk, I'll walk you through, how, I'll walk you through how that happens in this day, step here. Then as the electrons are essentially have given up much of their energy, they latch onto oxygen. So the oxygen that you breathe in when you inhale is required here. You stop breathing, this oxygen is no longer available. This whole process stops, and if it stops for long enough, you start to get cell death, tissue death, organ death, you will die, okay? So <clears throat> the oxygen that you inhale works its way into your cells, picks up the electrons and the hydrogen ions, which are important. <coughs> These are also called protons. These hydrogen ions are available because they're delivered by the electron carriers. Notice. When the electron carriers pick up the electrons, they're also picking up hydrogens. The electron carriers drop off the electrons at the electron transport chain and also release hydrogens. I don't know why they don't show it in your drawings. The electrons provide the energy to generate ATP. Electrons latch onto oxygen. Also, oxygen binds with hydrogen to form water. So uh, the electrons travel eventually, they are released from glucose. The electrons are put onto these two electron carriers. And eventually those electron carriers deliver those electrons to the electron transport chain. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
And then ultimately, we say that oxygen is the ultimate final electron acceptor or receptor for the electrons, okay? Forming water. So let's look at the mitochondrion. It has an outer membrane and an inner, mem inner membrane that's highly convoluted or infolded. And if you remember, glycolysis occurs outside. Acetic acid or acetylcholate enters into the mitochondria. Citric acid cycle occurs in the inner space. And then along this inner membrane, and the foldings of the inner membrane are called the cristae, but along the inner membrane of the mitochondria is where the electron transport chain is occurring. All right, and here's a, where's my cursor? <clears throat> here's a little picture showing you this gray line is the inner mitochondrial membrane that corresponds to this infolding, the cristae. The inner mitochondrial membrane, because the outer one is out here. Okay, so in here, all over the place, we have this grouping of proteins that is referred to as the electron transport chain. So notice what's happening here in step one. Electron carriers are dropping off the electron, electrons through the series of proteins that make the uh, electron transport chain. And the electron carriers are all also dropping off hydrogen ions. Okay. Notice the way that this line drops. That's indicating the decrease in energy of the electrons. The electrons are supplying energy to these protons, sorry, to these proteins. <clears throat> and the energy is used by these proteins to pump hydrogen ions or protons from the matrix to the space between the membranes, which is out here. So I'll show you the direction of the protons or the hydrogen ions. They're going from here, which is referred to as the matrix, and they're getting pumped across the inner mitochondrial membrane to this space. Right, so they're building up in concentration here the um, protons, okay, out here. <clears throat> What's driving the protons across the hydrogen hydrogen ions is the energy supplied by the electrons. The electrons are delivered to the electron transport chain by electron carriers. Okay, then at the end, the electrons are dropped off to oxygen. The little skull and crossbones here means that if you don't have oxygen intake. Everything stops, ultimately you stop, all right? Oxygen picks up the electrons, picks up protons, which are hydrogen ions, which are also here available <clears throat> because of the NADH or the electron carriers that deliver hydrogen ions, forming water, all right? And then it's like, okay, well, how's the ATP produced? Notice what's happening or what happens as the electrons flow through the electron transport chain. Their energy is used by the electron transport chain proteins to pump protons, hydrogen ions, into this region. As this is occurring, <clears throat> the concentration of hydrogen ions, protons, builds and builds and builds here. Increased concentration of hydrogen ions. Increased concentration. That should ring a bell. What happens when you have a high concentration of some substance in nature? It will want to go down its concentration gradient. It will want to diffuse. Diffusion. Ah, so now the hydrogen ions want to push back into the matrix. They can't get across the membrane because they're charged ions. But there's a special membrane protein that acts as a channel for these hydrogen ions or protons, and they shoot down their concentration gradient back into the matrix. Right, because they've been concentrated up here by the action of the <clears throat> electron transport chain proteins. As they shoot down their concentration gradient through the special membrane protein called ATP synthase, notice ASC, it's an enzyme. All enzymes are proteins. What does this specific enzyme do? It synthesizes ATP. How? It uses the energy 
of the hydrogen ions going down their concentration gradient to force a phosphate onto ADP, adenosine diphosphate, to make ATP, the high energy. So the energy in the concentration gradient of hydrogen here, or protons, is transferred onto the high energy bond of ATP. So that's happening here across the inner mitochondrial membrane. And that was that video showing you that spinning turbine thing. That spinning turbine thing is ATP synthase. ASE ending, it's an enzyme. What does it do? It synthesizes, makes ATP. Remember, many enzymes are named after what they do. So there's a lot going on here. So expect a few questions on a quiz and or exam about this figure right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so that's the figure zoomed in more closely. Electrons from the electron carriers are delivered and transfer, transferred to the electron transport chain. Okay, as they move, as the electrons move through the electron transport chain, some of that, their energy is used to pump hydrogen across the inner mitochondrial membrane. Oxygen is the final acceptor. The electrons forming water. Ultimately, hydrogen or protons are also called protons. Hydrogen ions move down their concentration gradient through the special enzyme ATP, ATP synthase, and it works to force a phosphate group onto ADP to generate ATP. Right, so that's the final third stage of. Uh, cellular respiration, the electron transport, or the electron transport chain where most of the ATP is generated. Okay, so we've covered all of that. So ultimately, cellular respiration can make up, up to approximately 32 ATPs for each starting glucose molecule through the three steps. Glycolysis, citric acid cycle, electron transport chain. Notice most of the ATPs are generated in the last stage, the electron transport chain. Okay. Glycolysis, a net yield of 2 ATP. Citric acid cycle, a net yield of 2 ATP. And the electron transport chain, up to 28 ATP. So <clears throat> organisms with mitochondria, like animals, plants, maximize the amount of ATP that's produced from the oxidative breakdown of glycolysis. Oxidative meaning that oxygen is required or utilized. Okay, so That is enough energy to make our cells do a lot of work and to keep large organisms like us uh, supplied with enough ATP to keep us alive from the breakdown of organic material and we focus on glucose, blood sugar. Okay. So, uh, respiration is uh, versatile, can, can actually burn, in terms of uh, cellular respiration, all kinds of food molecules. So, we don't just eat carbohydrates, we eat fats and proteins. So, if you eat food, it's usually made up of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Right? Whether it's uh, sushi, good stuff, or a cheeseburger, pizza, tacos, more good stuff, whatever it might be. Right? What we focused on is the breakdown of food into carbohydrates, sugars, glucose, glycolysis gets converted into, right, the glucose gets converted into acetyl-CoA, entered into the citric acid cycle, electron transport chain, a lot of ATP that gets produced. But fats can be broken down into the component glycerol and fatty acid. It can also enter somewhere into the cellular restoration pathway. The same thing with proteins, amino acids. The component amino acids, remember there's 20 different ones, can all enter somewhere along the cellular respiration pathway. All I want you to know here is that we focused on glucose, right, a carbohydrate, but fats and proteins, which are components of food that we eat, somewhere along the line, their component molecules will enter into the cellular respiration pathway ultimately to generate ATP. All right? Okay, we'll continue in the next section.